Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, today we're going to be talking about the Memoria Press Kindergarten Charter version and um, I'm going to be sharing kind of like a review and then also some suggestions for how I think it could be made better. Um, I want to start out by saying overall I think that it's excellent. Um, this is my fifth time teaching kindergarten and I really like this program. I would definitely use it again and I have already purchased the first grade materials for Memoria Press for my youngest child. So definitely resoundingly recommend um, and so I just want to kind of to kind of wanted to go through the different components um, so first of all if you get the charter charter version kindergarten curriculum manual um, the first page in here is a checklist of all of the materials that you need and so while I did know this I uh, kind of made the mistake of thinking like oh I'll get some of those things later I don't need them um, I would recommend getting everything because it's very challenging to start school for a day for the day and you get to something and you don't have part of it and also um, you may use it incorrectly if you don't have all the pieces which is what I did I mentioned this in another video but I'll get to that in a second um, so anyway these are all of the pieces for the core of uh, Memorial Press Kindergarten, the charter version. Um, so the read aloud set and science enrichment set are both sets of books, which I'll also get to later, um, that are sold separately. And so those books, whatever, come <laughs> separately. So anyways, um, so follow that. And the first thing that I really like about Memorial Press, if you get a whole, um, a whole package or whatever, is the way that it's laid out. Um, it's similar to other curriculum sellers that have all of the different things that you're going to be doing and so all you have to do is turn to like page one and it tells you what to do what time of the day it is um so kindergarten morning work is this book i love this book i think it's great um i would have loved to have even more pages so these are tear out as you can see um and so you have like the lesson of the day or not the lesson the manner of the day which is a separate thing that you buy um, and then it comes with cards you can hang up it has a little bit of math it has a little bit of phonics and it's just like an easy one pager um, for a kindergartner to do so that's like the first thing that you would do and then you do the recitation and so the difference between um, the charter version and the regular version is that these are secular so for example you're reciting the pledge of allegiance or you're reciting the first four planets or you're reciting the seven continents so i really like that i haven't made as much of a use of it as i would like to but i think that it's excellent calendar time um we have done i'm not sure if there's something i'm missing which tells you how you're supposed to do that that could be very possible but i've just kind of been winging that um the first start reading book a so the thing that i mentioned in my other video is that i did not realize that for these first start reading books this is the student book where they're doing written work there's a storybook and they have the same name first start reading first start reading so this is the storybook so you do the work in here and I'll just show you an example um, you do like you write the eyes and I know these are messy but we're <laughs> working on um, fatigue here uh, and then you draw something this is just an example of a page but so you do whatever page it tells you to do and then after you finish part of that, you go and it will tell you, okay, go read this little story, right? So I did not realize this. I don't know why, um, probably because I have a lot going on with five children in different grades and different curriculums, um, but you need to get both of these things for each level. So there's A, B, C, I think, and then I think D and E. Um, and then this is the supplemental workbook, which is for A, B, C, and D. And as you can see that the covers a match on all these materials. Then you also have um, the guide to phonics. And so this is like the actual lessons themselves. So it tells you whichever page you go on, like we're currently here, um, and then you go over, it will tell you like go over the app family or what have you. So these pieces all go together and you need to have all of them. And then there's also the first start reading. This is the teacher guide. And so this is what's going to tell you the different strategies and it has notes. And, you know, this is how the teacher guides are for most of, I think, the elementary um, and maybe into middle school. I'm not sure. This is how the teacher guides are. Um, very helpful, very 
um, scaffolded for people, those who need it. Um, and it also has the lists for dictation. So when you get to the end of these reading books, there is a portion where you're reading the words to your children and they're writing them and they give you in this teacher guide um, information about how to do that. You know, at this age, it's not about spelling. It's just about the them visually recognizing it. Although we did this, I tried to do this on ear to um, reinforce the phonic sounds. So anyway, the point of this is that there's a lot of pieces and you need to make sure that you have them all so that you can follow what it tells you to do. Because if you don't follow it, you're not getting the reinforcement and um, it's designed to really work together. And so that was something that my first time doing this, I really had a difficult time kind of getting a hold of that. Um, another tip is get the phonics flashcards. Um, I did it, as you can see, I just purchased these um, because I really did not understand the value of these and the necessity for repeating phonic sounds over and over again and showing, you know, the, the sounds for when you're teaching reading and teaching phonemic awareness and teaching word families, um, they are expensive, which is why I was reluctant to get them. But as you can see, you get a lot. So you're getting a good value and I think it would make your life much easier. I feel like my life would have been much easier if I would have just gotten them, see, because it's telling you immediately to be using them. Um, so that's that. The manuscript practice sheets. I have here, we haven't used these as much because my daughter was five when we started kindergarten and writing is a lot for her. Um, and so I've been trying to adjust things down to her pace. Um, we have started using this now though, because she is six and she is, um, it is easier for her to write. So the global comment that I would make about this whole phonics program in kindergarten is that I feel it's very advanced and rigorous. And if your child is not ready, um, it may just mean that they're not ready. It doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad fit. I think that you can definitely take different components and um, like level down to what your kid needs um, because there are so many different parts. You can kind of take what you need for now and then change it up later on, what have you. Um, <clears throat> I did not use the junior kindergarten program and I do wonder if that wouldn't have been a better fit for this year, I don't know. Um, because I'm not familiar with it, but um, for example, the math that is offered for kindergarten, we ended up using a different math, um, which is a first grade math. So it's kind of, you know, it really depends on the kid. Um, and then there is a copy book, which I do have, I don't have it at hand, but I found once again, I have a child who is not, does not have a lot of endurance for writing. And I actually ended up giving that to my son who's in third grade who also doesn't have a lot of endurance for writing but is definitely capable and old enough to be doing it. Um, I really did like the quotes that are included in there. They're from I think mostly like presidents and other men or people throughout history. Um, what I can remember is like Ronald Reagan. I think there's an Aristotle quote and so I really like the quotes that were chosen and so that's another difference from the um, charter version versus the normal, or I don't know, not normal, but the original Memoria Press is that I believe the copy work for the original Memoria Press is includes scripture and biblical. So that was another reason I wanted to get the charter version. Um, and then lastly, the literature and enrichment, you have uh, four or five different components of this. So you have a read aloud book, which is specifically for reading aloud, but I believe they're all picture books. And then you also have a book for science or social studies, and then you do that later in the week. So you do the read aloud book in the beginning of the week, and then you do the enrichment book later in the week. Then you have, let me just grab it real quick, um, music enrichment, and they have a separate charter version book for this. I'm not sure why, um, but it tells you, and you can look at the sample um, online, but it tells you about the piece, about the composer, um, you know, it really is a substantial lesson, I feel, for kindergarten, and then it goes through second grade. So we'll be using this again next year. I definitely like it. Um, another aspect of this that I like, aside from exposing the kids to the music, is um, they have all the links on their website, so it makes it really easy to find. Um, I don't know if they sell a CD or anything, but um, you can just go onto the website and immediately listen to it, so that's really good. Um, and then the art, they sell the art cards, which I'm just going to try to grab. Um, 
and these are by grade also and they have different sizes um, these are great they have a little bit about the piece on the back of them and some of these actually I think all of these are designed to match up with what you're learning about so for example when you're learning about um, Ferdinand the bull you are doing an, a piece of art that's on cows or bulls and you're also I think the science that week is about cows and dairy farms and things um, so it's very integrated I like that and I also like how easy it is um, you know some weeks of of doing this were better for us than others because like I said it's a lot of different things to um, keep a handle on but we're definitely doing this next year and they do have a larger size which like ideally I would like to do larger but I don't know if I'm gonna have the space so these are very compact they're like five by seven um, so very good and there is a um, little blurb about the artist in and the piece in your enrichment guide which is um, separate from this is the kindergarten core you also need to get the kindergarten enrichment and um, you use those two things together so basically when you're reading from the science or the social studies books or you're doing the art and music all of those things are in here and there's like 20 comprehension questions for each piece of literature very in-depth and there's additional um, things to look into or teaching tips in here I really I love this program I mean this part of the program in particular um, and then another part of the enrichment is you have a book of crafts and these are by grade and so in the beginning of this one you have um, so there's literature crafts and then um, art crafts right concept crafts so I haven't dug into these as much as I would like and I realized in preparing this the reason for that is because I have a child who's constantly making art and I have art all over my house and in every drawer and every box um, so I just don't have the bandwidth to kind of make that happen um, but I did purchase this after you know I thought I wouldn't need it because I wanted to do some of those things so we ended up doing like the Stella Luna craft and we did I think the owl craft and we may do others and I did purchase the first grade one because I do feel like it's worth having even if you don't do every single craft to have this as an extension activity and also to have a hands-on component um, the other part of the core curriculum which I hadn't gotten to discussing yet is this cut and paste book and this also um, is assigned and so when you'll be doing, I think, the phoneme of J, then you do this cut and paste. And so, um, again, it's in your, um, what is this book called? Instructor's Guide. It tells you, okay, go to your cut and paste book and do this page. And so we kind of um, got off track with this book and the morning time book because I was really looking for a worksheet for my child to do every day because if I didn't do it at our pace then there would only be like one a week or two a week and this is a child that really needs something to be doing independently well not independently but you know what I mean like by themselves next to you with you telling them what to do if that makes sense um, so that's kind of one of the things that I wish there was more of is more um, not writing but like cutting things out or doing little short written things versus the longer form of the manuscript or the copy book so the next thing is the poems book we haven't been diligent about this but I definitely do do this occasionally and um, we happen to have this book so it's nice not to have to purchase these, some of these things um, so that's kind of the spiel for the core curriculum um, now I want to talk specifically about the um, social studies and science enrichment so I have some of the books that were assigned books and I'm just going to show those to you guys because it's kind of hard to, I feel like to navigate on the website um, there's several Gail Gibbons books and um, some of the books that we've covered I don't have here because I did get them at the library um, which is good because a lot of these are classics and so you can you know classics or widely available so you can find them um, either at your library or some of them we just read online this was really cute and actually there's another groundhog book um, groundhog day by gail gibbons which i didn't pull but that's also included um, and my child really likes these books so these are the cat in the hat um, 
I think they're only science, but there's like a couple different ones and many of them are included and those have really been a hit. So I'm glad that they use those. And then these are the Let's Read and Find Out. These are also really great, very in-depth um, conceptual books. And we just finished that um, Frog Weeks, so that was good. And then another Gail Gibbons book. This was a really cool book and it actually has a couple of very simple um, experiments in it. So we ended up doing one with ice water and condensation and that was fun. And then Animals in Winter, love this one. Snow is falling, it's actually still snowing here in California so um, you could really extend that. Um, Owls by Gail Gibbons. This book I've actually had for several years but I've never read so it was really fun to read this and kind of dig into um, the comprehension questions about like how does a city work and what are these different departments and um, I just thought it was really cute and especially because we live in a part of the state where there are um, snow plows and things but not nowhere near the east coast but anyway um, and then this was from a week that was about Africa and lion or not Africa it was about lions in Africa I think um, this and another book about lions I think and then this one and this is the one we ended up making pretzels about because we really got into that one Planets. oh this is actually not related so I'm just gonna take that one out um, wish for a fish oh yeah so African lions was that week and then the Big Dipper and then yeah another African wildlife book so those are the books that um, I actually have that we got to I really like them this is one of the biggest selling points for me of Memoria Press um, for the younger years I really like the picture books I really like the quality of the picture books that are chosen I feel like none of these are fluff they're very um, in depth but at an age appropriate level so you know maybe some more advanced concepts than your child's going to understand but it's not completely without of reach very um carefully chosen clearly and so i really appreciated that and you know i learned a lot of stuff too so the next part of this i kind of wanted to discuss what i thought could be improved and so the picture books that were chosen were very good quality and very um you know integrated with the learning however not all of the weeks were created equally so for example and this is the charter version all these books i'm not sure what the difference is with the original memorial press um, version but for example for the fall for the first 12 or so weeks there's only two weeks that have information about fall and one of those is about apples and one of those is about pumpkins and I had seen Memoria Press share a book I think it's called November which is in the junior kindergarten program and I told them I really wish there were more books about fall um, like changing of the seasons or leaves or other things that are more seasonal especially this is kindergarten I feel like that is a big part of most curriculums so that was one thing that I felt was missing and we did end up supplementing with books from the library um, another thing that I felt might deserve to be changed is that in this charter version um, there's three weeks dedicated to Christmas and you know we are Jewish and we do not celebrate Christmas and I ended up just skipping those three weeks because like we're not going to be reading about Christmas and this is supposed to be a charter version and so you know we did read one of the books I think it's called the little fir tree and I felt like okay well there's like a broader message of this but I did really feel like if you're going to be completing a charter version which is supposed to be secular so that it can be you can use charter funds to purchase it there should have been more research and development into other options in the winter months you know for example if you want to talk about like one of the books is Christmas around the world so we didn't do Christmas, that book, Christmas Around the World. What if you did a book that talks about other winter traditions around the world? So what if you had something about, you know, what do they do in Asian countries during um, the winter time? Uh, let's talk about, um, you know, Hanukkah or let's talk about Diwali or let's talk about Kwanzaa. There's lots of different things. And so, um, for example, another book that I thought might work would be like this one is called The Shortest Day and this is about the winter solstice. So this is a brand new book in fairness, but something about the winter solstice or something about just winter in general versus having 
religious specific holiday books for so many weeks. Um, so that was one thing that I thought could be changed. Um, another book that I thought would have been perfect would be The Snowy Day by Ezra Jack Keats, especially because you're doing, um, where is it, the Robert Frost book, Stopping by the Woods on a Snowy Evening. Like these would be perfect together, um, in my opinion. So that would be an option. And then this book, The Mitten and Snow by Cynthia Ryland, um, I was going to suggest these two books. And then I was looking at the junior kindergarten before preparing for this video. And it turns out these are both junior kindergarten books. So um, I don't, I guess you wouldn't want to reuse them if you have people who did junior kindergarten, but something like that. And I know that uh, there are other books by this author that like the, let's see if we can quickly find it. Um, like the hat or something, um, just something that's like literature about the snow that's not specific to Christmas would have been good. And like this one, for example, Over and Under the Snow, this is about animals hibernating. This would be like a perfect science book to include those weeks. So that's kind of um, what my thoughts were about winter and fall. Um, and then the other thing that I kind of didn't understand is that there's seven weeks that don't have any science or social studies book. And I don't know why, like, why do we not have more than one book that week? So you have five days scheduled in the instructor's guide and you're only reading one book. So that was something that was kind of confounding to me. And so what we did is, you know, I supplemented, I looked at whatever the theme was and I got more books. So for example, um, this week we read the Gail Gibbons book about how a house is built this book was assigned and there was one other book assigned rocks a box in which is also kind of about houses so i inc i also included the blue house and i also included if you're not from the prairie um, which is like more of a sciencey book so that we now have um you know four out of the five days we're reading a book um so that's something that i um, would suggest if anybody cared about my opinion um, i do understand that the current pack of books is you know expensive if you buy all of the materials for kindergarten it's going to cost a thousand dollars however because many families are going to use the library and maybe are going to get books from friends and family or use thrift books or ebay or what have you to get discount discounted options i feel that there is a big opportunity to kind of beef up the social studies and science for you know especially if you look at the um, phonics program this is an academic kindergarten this isn't a play-based kindergarten this is like real deal classical education and so i feel that there's an opportunity here to kind of um you know make it more robust and more well-rounded and so um another comment that i had wanted to make was um you know for example in certain weeks where there's nothing why not use Jim Arnosky books? These are um, nature study books that are well known in the Charlotte Mason circles. Um, just throwing in books like these in addition to like, you know, the um, Let's Read and Find Out books and the Cat in the Hat books and Gail Gibbons. I just feel like these are, um, you know, there's easy ways to do this. And obviously there's a lot more Gail Gibbons books and Big Dipper books too that could be used. Um, I do know that some of the Gail Gibbons books and things are used in first grade, so you can't use all of them in kindergarten, but um, third grade doesn't use any picture books. So it's not like there's this very um, limited number of titles per year. There's really only junior kindergarten, kindergarten and first grade that are using picture books. So I wanna encourage um, Memoria Press if they um, wanna hear what's the word, um, positive, positive feedback, feedback. Um, I would just be consistent, you know, for example, if you look at, um, many of the weeks, there's two picture books for the entire week. There's one read aloud and then there's one, um, science or social studies book. And then you have other weeks where there's only one book and then you have week 33, which has six books. And so I just don't understand why there's such a, um, disproportionate amount of books from week to week. It just seems kind of confusing to me. Uh, and one, another thing I wanted to say is about the spring part of the year. I looked through that and I have all my books organized and I feel like they really hit it out of the park with spring. There's books about birds, there's books about frogs, there's books about rain, there's books about eggs, there's books about every, like, natural phenomenon that you could think or associate with spring and like there's planting a seed and all these different things and so i feel that the fall and winter could really um, mirror that 
So, and then this is like another um, nature study book. And anyway, so that's kind of, I think that's all the thoughts that I had. Um, another thing I just wanted to highlight circling back to the enrichment is that these really, the books that are included, they do such a thorough job and there is like 30, I know I already said this, but I just want to emphasize there's like 30 discussion questions, which I, you know, after we read Stella Luna, I asked them to my daughter and she was able to answer all of them. And I feel that it's a very good format and it's very well done. So Overall, again, I highly, highly recommend this. I think it's really great, and I hope that this video doesn't come across negatively. I'm just kind of trying to give my perspective as, you know, someone who's been homeschooling for more than 10 years and has done kindergarten five times. Um, this is definitely my favorite kindergarten curriculum. I hope that comes across in this video. Um, and there's just a couple of tweaks that I think could really make it um, perfect. So thanks for watching this video. Um, feel free to leave any comments if you um, agree with me, disagree with me, what you love about Memoria Press Kindergarten, um, or if you've used the original version and not the charter version, maybe if you want to weigh in on what some of the differences are, what got lost in translation. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching this video. I hope you guys enjoy it and I'll see you next time.